Alrighty guys, sorry to interrupt our broadcast, but it turns out that Sen actually no-showed for our event, unfortunately. Uh, we spoke to his manager soon after we realised he wasn't there when the game started, but turns out the manager got the times and dates wrong. Sen was actually on a plane during that. Unfortunately, we couldn't find a replacement in time, so we are going to have to give the walkover to Lucky. We do apologise in advance. But uh, unfortunately, there was nothing we could do about it in this sense. So we are going to go into the games uh, Oz versus Jinro next. Stay with us. Hi, we are FSO Team. You are watching FSO TV. And welcome back, guys. Our next game coming up, it is going to be FXO's Oz up against Liquid Jinro. Jinro has been practicing his heart out over in Korea, and it's really sad to see that he hasn't gotten back into GSL yet. But let's test out his TVP skills here, shall we, Raokun? Because Oz, definitely one of the stronger Protoss players in this matchup, currently in the round of 16 for GSL. And I don't know, I can't wait to see how, how Jinro stands up to him here. Oz definitely the more preparation player, so he's going to be going into this tournament with a little bit of a disadvantage to his normal comfort zone. So we do have Oz down here at the bottom left as our red Protoss. And then Jinra up here at the top right as our yellow Terran. So Daybreak, a very good map for both these guys, very comfortable with their macro play. But we'll see how we go. What do you think we're going to see, Raokun? I think it, it depends on how Jinra decides to play it, because in the past he'd really kind of forced himself into like a one track mine kind of he tends to play the same style a lot mm. so even though Oz he really does rely on the preparation quite a bit yeah if Jinro doesn't do anything to mix it up then I'd still say that Oz is still favored to take this relatively easily yeah. Jinro will have to throw something in unexpected if he wants to beat Oz here well, of course, we do see the Nexus first coming out from Oz down here uh, Jinro is scouting at a, a very standard time but it looks like he's actually going for the gas expense. So it's straight out of the gate, probably going to be yeah, that's just... the annoying part of the build order. <laughs> yeah, this is knowing Jinro. He generally tends to play for really quick expansions in the early stages of the game. So he's perfectly comfortable going for a Nexus first on Daybreak. Even though it is a two-player map, but you see the Nexus first on here invariably. And he knows he'll be able to get away with it. Following it up with the two gas actually immediately. It's an interesting follow-up as his gateway isn't even done yet, so we'll see where he takes it from here. Yeah. That being said, the double gas down here for Jinro as well. Hasn't actually put down his extra two barracks just yet. Normally you see them pretty much instantly after that command set has gone down. But I think this is just more of a reaction compared to the double gas from Oz as well. So, both these guys looks like they're going to be playing very passively at this point in time. Yeah, and that's just like... Just the way Jinro tends to play early on, he doesn't do a lot of really early game timing attacks. So Oz knows that he's gonna be able to take a few more, cut a few more corners early. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we'll see what it does. I mean, you can see the Jinro is throwing down a, a bunker right now. There's no reason to have a bunker right now. I don't. I'm, well, I'm against not. Oz, yes, there is. Because <laughs> even even if. He's his SCV only just left the base, though. Like, he's seen everything up until this point. He could delay that bunker a bit, is what I'm saying. Mm, better be safe than sorry, in my opinion. He's actually going straight for a factory, so that'd be why he's putting it down, just being very careful. Because a lot of the times, you will see Oz follow this up with 4-gate uh, pressure. A lot of sentries mm -hmm. and zealots after this. But a factory going down this early is very interesting here for Juno. He's actually going for the reactor on the barracks. 
Yeah, a lot of players when they go for the the SS expansion or even the command center first, they like to get the second command second barracks out uh, before the factory. So he's going mm -hmm. straight into that tech. We'll see if General will go into mech because he is he loves mech. I haven't seen it as much versus Protoss recently, unless for your Jack G, but that's that's a different story. Mm -hmm. Alright, so more gateways going down at the natural. He's gonna be up to four in total. And uh, Jinra going straight for that starport. So if this pressure does come from Oz, it could be very frustrating for Jinra to try and defend. Just doesn't have the the high amount of units that he'd really need. Only that one bunker, second one going down as well though, and here we go, it's going to be the starport on the, the tech lab. Pylon's finishing up in the center of the map for Oz right now, and he's got three more gateways just about to finish. So yeah, he is going for the four gate pressure follow up. Uh, robotics facility coming in as well. Uh, so if he pokes in here, finds it a little bit too hard to break, he might be able to get an immortal out and try again. Yeah. But that Cloaked factory Manchin actually away. did fly over and give the starport a uh, a tech lab to start cloak very very quickly like you're saying and now he's going for the tech lab on the factory so this is really weird it looks like he's going for a 111 after a, a uh, gasless expansion well we do have two bunkers here only stalkers in the mix of course it did go for the robotics facility not anything else and he's going to target down there's no sentries either so he's not going to be able to kill it. he's trying to does <laughs> whoa did lose the zealot though. on that stalker. Mm. Oh my god, that was a very, very close call. Very interesting but unit Jin choice here by Oz. He's got four sentries coming in. Siege mode is on the way. So it looks like we're going to have a fire mech hybrid coming out here from Junior. Something you don't see very often. Yeah, but look at all the SVs that are just hanging around waiting to repair this bunker. Oh, nice force fields. Mm -hmm. He's going to take out this other bunker. And all those SCVs have been off the line for quite a while as well. So he's doing a good amount of damage, taking down SCVs. He delayed the economy. Jinro is actually having to give up his natural right now. Yeah. And now he's going to be able to camp the ramp here, try and put some pressure on supply depots, then back off with the force fields and just camp out the natural. Or he could just run straight up that ramp. He's still, oh there's way too much stuff God. here. And he's just finished, so he'll be forced away now. But he can back up with the force fields, maybe? No, he's going to keep trying to force his way through and kill SCVs. Wow. Yeah. It's only one tank. It's going to take a while to get down. But Oz has actually gone for the third base while this is happening. The Banshee only just now showing up. And we do see a Colossus on the way. But... He's killing a lot of workers. Oh my god, that's 19 workers down right now. He lost the last of the sentries, but this cloak, Banshee's going to die! It. Oh, cloaks <laughs> at the last second. As a, if a missile is in the air and you cloak it, it will miss, so that's why I say alive, but then the observer comes in and he finishes it off. Yeah, uh, there are two observers on the map here for Oz. I'm trying to find where the second one is. second one's at his natural trying to defend against the cloak banshee that's flying around in between the two bases right now. So Jinro is doing some damage in return, but he's only got nine workers in comparison to the Actually, 19. Actually, both of his observers are uh, over at Jinro's base. So this Banshee getting quite a few kills. Eight kills already. Nine. He's trying to wait. Actually, no. He's There it is. The Observer's out now. So he's going to have a third one on the field to try and deal with this. And this Banshee now on 12 kills. So uh, Oz sending both of those... Those Observers over really started to cost him there. Looking at the worker count. 27 to 49. Still in a, a massive lead. Taking advantage of the very heavy tech that came out there from Jinro. And with this third base now up for Oz, this is probably just going to snowball into the next engagement, and Oz is going to win. Yeah, I mean, Jinro is only just now getting some very meager mining going at his natural, and Oz is already saturating his third. Yeah. So th this economy difference is just going to get pretty ridiculous very fast. Mm -hmm. Jinro has some tanks. He's got a Raven out. He's actually chasing down Observer with that Raven. He will be able to take it out, but... Oz got a good scouting in on the main base before it died. He sees everything that's going on. He knows he's a really solid position. And once these Colossus pop out, he can add a few more gateways and then just steamroll Jinro, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Well, especially with the Colossus and the extended thermal lance. Blink done. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those <laughs> points where the Oz has just got such a big lead from early on in the game. That I don't think anything that Jinra does can get him back in it. Like, unless Oz walks his unit uh, fast. <laughs> yeah, Jinra has to play really solid, and Oz is going to have to make a big mistake mm -hmm. uh, for this to get e 
equalize, but I mean, he's making a lot of tanks right now. He's still producing the cloak banshees. He's producing a unit composition that has the potential of Oz getting a little bit overconfident and throwing an army into him. So it's not completely over yet. It's just Oz has to make sure he attacks into this just the right way. Yeah. Well, he does have a 20 supply lead now. He's getting his plus one attack done from his forge. He's already completely saturated his third. He's got cannons going up to defend his mineral lines against these Banshees. This Banshee now has 19 yeah. kills though. So credit to that Banshee trying to keep things even. 39 SCVs to 66. In the third base mm -hmm. as well, taking a few shots from these Stalkers. Finally actually got around and got a few of these probes before the Oz managed to get in position to force her out. But uh, these Banshees are being effectively zoned out now with the cannons, the Stalkers, and the Observers now. Oh, that Banshee nearly dying. Now they're both really low health, they're going to have a hard time doing much more damage than this, and then the... There was a third be... one coming over here for Jinra, but I think he's realized oh, there's no way he can touch blink. it. Oh, Oh, and he gets that Banshee over between the second and the third bases there. Mm. Oz going extremely tech-heavy right now, he's going to have Colossus and Storm before the Jinra moves out. He's still only starts. 20 supply up, because he hasn't actually made any units. <laughs> Pretty much. Except yeah, he's for just been one. tacking really hard right now because he knows he's really far ahead. He's been deflecting his banshees to the best of his ability, and he's just taking advantage of his position in the game. Once all this tech kicks in, though, it's going to put him very far ahead. And Jinro, I mean, if he goes now, he would have a very slight opportunity while this stuff is still upgrading this army for Oz in the center of the map's not that big. The reinforcements are coming in. If he can catch these armies while they're spread apart, this could possibly do something for Jinro, but you can see that the moment he sieges up, Oz just backs off, waits for the 